Well, good Wednesday to you, College Church. It's good to be with you again today, and I hope this uh, video finds you doing well on this Wednesday. Uh, have a short week this week for some of us. Uh, the office was closed here on Monday, so it is a shorter week this week, which is uh, kind of crazy. And uh, any time that I'm not in the office, it seems like I'm playing catch up for the rest of the week. But nonetheless, it's good to be with you today and to uh, bring another devotional to you. I've been in the book of Romans here lately, and I have to admit, a lot of that has been spurred on by the death of our good brother, dear brother, Jimmy Allen. And I've uh, gone back over that book and, and even used Dr. Allen's survey of Romans book that has been uh, well used uh, as, as my guide um, during this time. And I've really enjoyed uh, looking over and studying again in the book of Romans on maybe even a little bit of a deeper level. Um, but I've been in a series uh, talking about plain talk and how I enjoy plain talk. Um, I like it when I don't have to guess, and I like it when people are just upfront and honest. And I believe in a lot of ways, the book of Romans is, is littered with plain talk. And today I find myself in Romans chapter 3. And as we get started today, I just want to start off by reading Romans chapter 3, verses 21 through 24. It says, but now a righteousness from God, apart from the law, has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. The righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. To me, that passage is another bit of plain talk. And this morning, I want to just to lay out some things that I see. And I have four, four quick points that are going to go along with answering the question that I'm about to pose. Based on Romans chapter 3, verse 21 through 24, can we say that we are saved or redeemed by faith? Are we justified by faith? Do we receive the redemption of Christ's blood by faith? And I think the answer is plain. I think the answer is yes. There's one contingency. If we believe, if we can define faith in the way that I am about to define it, faith alone, as we see in James, uh, faith without works, is dead. And we see that. And we understand that works, a works-only gospel, working our way into salvation, is no good as well, too. But to say or ask the question, can we be saved, redeemed, or justified by faith? I think the answer is yes, if we define faith in the following way. Faith is not only believing in something, with your mind, or even with your heart. But having faith begs for an investment from the person who bears it. If you have faith, there also will re be required action. So there's four things that I want to define faith with, and faith alone is, is not what we're talking about, but it's faith and. Faith requires love. Through faith, uh, even though our love, excuse me, let me start over. Through love, faith expresses affection to the one we have faith in and to whom we are compelled to share that faith with. You can't have faith without love. Faith is not alone by itself, but it also carries love. Faith also compels one to trust. Faith calls one to trust in that which we believe in. It calls us to a real sense of dependence on what our faith is focused. To have faith in someone or something means we have to trust that person or that thing. So faith is not alone. Faith has love and it requires love and faith requires trust. The third thing 
is faith moves us to change. Faith requires, in the sense of our faith in God, requires repentance. When we put our faith in something, it can't help but cause us to change from what we once were. Our faith in Jesus begs us to change in a way of repentance. Repentance is change in a, to a huge degree. Repentance means an about face to turn away from, to turn away from sin. And without faith, we can't repent. And without repentance, do we really have faith? We believe we have faith and we must change. It starts with repentance. So faith is just not a singular word in and of itself. Faith has a lot of things that go with it. It requires love. It compels us to trust. And faith moves us to change. And in this sense, that is repentance. And finally, faith in Jesus requires or draws us to want to follow him, to be obedient. And that obedience follows a lot of ways, but one of those most important ways to obey Jesus and follow our faith in him is to be baptized. Faith and obedience go hand in hand. Faith and baptism, faith in our Lord and Jesus and baptism are part of the knot that ties the union between God and us, God and a Christian. If we are serious about faith, obedience is not far behind, and obedience is not an issue. We will freely and fully follow our faith, and that means obeying whatever it is we have faith in. So are we saved by faith? Absolutely. Yes, we are. But faith is not just a simple, singular word. Real faith brings a lot to the table. And in this instance, I think we can see it's real plain talk that Paul is laying out that faith is what brings us into a right relationship with God. But that faith that we have in God is not singular. It requires love, trust, change, in this case, repentance, and obedience. And at the forefront of obedience and following God and following Jesus is committing our lives to him through baptism. The Christian life can be summed up in one word, faith. And it can be summed up in one word from start to finish. And that word is faith. Thank you for joining in today. And I hope that this has blessed you in some way. So when someone ever asks, can we be saved by faith? Absolutely, the answer is yes. But faith is a lot more than just those five little letters. Thank you for joining. I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day. God bless you.